How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Yes, I'm good, thank you. How's life treating you since graduation? Yeah, it's been hectic, but mostly because I've just been applying for jobs all the time and just waiting for that one yes at the minute. So what do you think, what do you think was the best thing about the course, like your final year? What did you enjoy most? Um, the whole creative element of the FMP, because um, I'm a very creative person. I've never been very good at like academic writing so my dissertation was hard work and I had to really work hard to get my grade up um, but the FMP it was just all you were left to do it and then you had to formulate it all yourself and I really loved doing it and I made it as creative as I could. That's cool so did you do an FMP and a dissertation then? Yeah so um, final year the first section it was um, work-based learning we had to write it up and put reflective theories on it and then I had my dissertation and I had a proposal for my FMP right and then after obviously Christmas was then it was just purely FMP and I think I had entrepreneurial practice alongside it which was just like a presentation that you recorded yourself so it wasn't too overwhelming but the FMP was a massive project on its own. Yeah. So, so can you tell me a little bit about what you did for your FMP then? So for my FMP I created a Nautilus beauty product um, and it was the skincare range for Fenty Skin and during my proposal um, I chose to do sustainable beauty and then I realised that all packaging, um, biosynthetic ingredients and waterless beauty were trending within the industry. So I wanted to make a product that contained all of them. So I did a three step routine. And they were like serum drops. So they were made of red seaweed out of casing. You put them in the water, they dissolve and then you rub it on your face. So did you actually... Did you actually develop the product then or are you just talking about a product that could exist? No, How so does it work? So I I created a press box which contained my three new products, my three refillable packagings and then I did like a travel friendly stacker to go with it um, and I made it all myself but obviously like the um the little serum drops I couldn't formulate that obviously because I'm not like a scientist I'm not going to be able to do all my <laughs> oh, <stuff. you> <laughs> um, so I used ore beads you know those little water oh, beads yeah. yeah I do yeah I yeah. just picked what color I wanted and then during my development flower then so I had a yellow one so it was a jojoba oil drop I had a clear one so it was nice seminide and then I had a purple hue which was like an antioxidant one so I kind of like made it that's really clever uh, yeah so I just love being great so I was like right I'm just gonna go mad with it and I did <laughs> it sounds like you had fun mm. do you think that everything ran smoothly with the whole project is there anything that you think in hindsight you would have done differently um so my packet, I'm actually going to show you right now what happened. So the product I did, it was originally black and I had to paint it to Fenty Skin's theme. So I had to spray paint it and I was just there in my garden putting layers and layers of spray paint on. Um, and this is what they look like. Oh, but that looks cool. You can see it started to chip. Yeah. And that's one thing I wish I did differently. Hold on. So had you spray painted it white, but underneath it was darker? No, see, I didn't do that. So maybe that would have been better to do. Or even put a primer on it before, but I just got excited and just went in straight away. Yeah. So I, I felt like you planning <laughs> that aspect more. But yeah. So and no. The so development. You would have, so, you would have, so you would have done the packaging differently yeah I've definitely researched a better way to get lilac on the product that I bought like the glass yeah. jar definitely 
Yeah. Fair enough. Would, what would you say was your biggest challenge throughout your your project, besides the spray painting? Um, I'd say because I had to do my all my advertising myself, so I had to have a model. Um, and I don't know if you have this as well, but we had a photography sessions. Mm -hmm. We only had them in year one, and then year two we were completely at home so we had no access to anything and then into third year we begged Rachel for some extra help before FMP because I didn't know how to use a camera um so I had a session I think I had two sessions with one of the photography people and then I had to just remember everything and do it all myself and that was mega challenging and obviously I had to act professional in front of my model when really I was an amateur but I really didn't know but it was, pictures it came yeah. out really well but yeah that was challenging I was just yeah well well done for overcoming it did you not you hadn't done any photography prior to the course no so no completely new. I did my um still life shoot before my model so it gave me a chance to basically do like a run through of what I was going to do so that really helped me. Do you think you'll do any photography going forward? I think I would like to like if I was into like a social media executive rather than um, forking out more money for like a new photographer I could be like well I have some skills that I could help but yeah, I think it's just having the confidence in myself to just step up and be like, I can do this, but yeah, we'll see. Your plans going forward, how do you think your experience at university has helped you to, where, of what, for where you want to kind of go to? I feel like before I went to uni I didn't really have a lot of knowledge of the beauty industry um I did beauty therapy at college and then I did um theatrical makeup after that but I never had say like the knowledge or the skills to go into the beauty industry and I yeah. feel like I've gained a lot of knowledge that I never <laughs> would have even dreamed that I would know like cons consumer trends trend forecasting analyzing data like that's just like that's just not something that I've ever had to use in my life and now yeah. I feel like I could do that confidently and right in my CV now compared to what it was before it's just like a great leap yeah which is to see do you think yeah so what did what sort of advice did you get from your lecturers and um did, did you listen to your advice? Um, I feel like at the start of the year, um, Claire gave us like an inspirational speech about our FMP saying, um, do not leave it last minute. You need to start straight away. And but I did start straight away. And even at the end, I was still rushing. Like It's just such yeah. a massive project and you don't, understand it until you have started doing it and it's just like the massive development file that you have to do I was just catching up at the end because everything involved in your final outcomes has to be fully described within your development file mm -hmm. and my development file was like 69 pages long and then I had to create the physical outcomes put it digitally and I had to do a reflective log all at once so yeah you've definitely got to get started straight away and even though I did I feel like I could have done more <laughs> I think do you know like I think that's that's quite a natural way to feel isn't it about something that you've put so much heart and soul into like at what point do you just go right that's it I finished like <laughs> I know like, it's another thing, another thing, another thing, and it was just like it. Ju it felt like it was never going to end, but it all formulated together, and I got a good grade. So yeah, I was really happy with uh, everything. Well done for that. 
it probably feels like such a blur now looking back over the three years doesn't it or even just this last one yeah but I was trying to figure out what assignments I did and I was like was that year two was that year three like it just all like blurred into one yeah yeah so what one piece of advice would you pass on to um the level six students starting their FMPs I would say don't panic and just persevere because you'll get to the end of it and you'll be really proud of what you come out with. And also you've got your lecturers there. So if you do have any questions, they're not just gonna turn you away um, and be like, well, you should do it yourself. They won't do that and they will help you. So if you do need help, they are there for guidance and you should definitely use it. Awesome. Well, I think that's all my questions. So, Thank you so much for giving up your Saturday evening to speak to me. You're and um, the best of luck with your job hunt.